you have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. A year of plenty greetings in the name of Jesus. This is Mother O bringing to you Church on the Hill, making you brighter, better, and bigger. Apostle M. V. J. Lupago is bringing to you the last session of the message, The Just Shall Live by Faith. To survive during this COVID-19 situation, you need faith. And also, you need just to do everything in your power as a person to be protected and let God do the rest, what you cannot do. You need to continue washing your hands, maintaining social distance, wearing your mask in the name of Jesus, and just being responsible. Do what you can. Do what is in your power. And allow God to do what is impossible for you. May God heal and deliver all that are already infected and affected in the name of Jesus. Apostle M. V. J. Lepoko is bringing the word of God that will stir up your faith and cause you to overcome all challenges. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And thank you very much for the top fans and the top sharers. Greetings in the name of Jesus. This is Apostle MVG Lipoko making you brighter, better, and bigger. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in this day. This day is an excellent day. It's a beautiful day. It's a wonderful day. It is a day of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that this day should work for you and for your family in the name of Jesus. So this is part six of our message, the just shall live by faith. The subject of faith is impossible to finish. Like God, it is unlimited. I can preach on faith every day of the year without fail. The kingdom of God is about faith. Today I'm concluding this message on faith for the simple reason that I have to teach you on other subjects that are also important. Let me recap on what we have already addressed on this topic of faith. Number one, we were created in God's class we were created by God in his own class Genesis chapter 1 from verse number 26 to verse number 28 the Bible says then God said let us make men in our image according to our likeness in our image according to our likeness meaning you were created in God's class to be like God let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the beds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God created us in his own class to rule like him, to create like him, and to be like him. So God operates and rules by faith. He rules by issuing decrees and commands. He calls those things that are not as though they were. And when you read Romans 4, verse number 17, the Bible talks about Abraham who operated like God. Abraham had the faith of God. That is why he's called the father of faith because he operated by God, calling those things that are not as though they were. So for you to remain in God's class, you have to live by faith, operate by faith. When darkness attacks, Declare light. When sickness attacks, declare healing. When poverty attacks, declare prosperity. The just shall live by faith. 
They're just are those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. If you read Ephesians 2 verse 8, the Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Romans 5 verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So your relationship with God began by faith. And if your relationship with God started by faith, then it has to continue by faith. Also, I gave you the definition of faith according to Hebrews 11 verse 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. Meaning that faith us now receives now celebrates now so when you go before god by faith and you pray and ask from god you receive now by faith celebrate now by faith and thank god for what you have received now because you understand that god has already given you what we are asking for faith is the substance meaning that faith is what makes real to you what you are believing God for remember that we live in the physical realm but the blessings of God are in the spiritual realm the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1 verse 3 that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus God has already blessed us but the blessings are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus for you now to experience the blessings of God in the realm where you are, you have to receive them by faith. So faith gives substance. Faith makes real what you are believing God for. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 verse 6. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the reward of those that diligently seek him. So you have to believe that God is. That God is what he has promised to be in your life. That God is your healer. That God is your savior. That God is your deliverer. That God is your protector. But also, faith operates through the word of God. There is no way you can exercise faith outside of the word of God. Faith in God is faith in his way. Faith in God is faith in the promises of God. That is why I always challenge you to be a student of the word of God. For you to operate by the faith of God, you must know the word of God. But also the Bible tells us that all things are possible to them that believe. Your responsibility, child of God, is to believe the word of God and believe the promises of God. Don't try to understand, only believe. Let me emphasize this one. Don't try to understand, only believe. Like Mary in the Bible, in Luke chapter 1, the Bible tells us that when the angel of God came to announce to her that she was going to conceive, even though in the natural it was impossible, even though she could not figure it out, but she said to the angel of God, let it be to me according to your word. I may not understand it. I may not understand the process of how it will happen, but I agree with the word of God. So you have to agree with the word of God. Don't try to understand, believe the word of God, agree with the word of God. The just shall live by faith. Today, under the same topic, the just shall live by faith. I want to talk to you on aggressive faith. So I'm going to take you through examples in the Bible to challenge you to be aggressive in your faith. Three powerful examples in the Bible that talk or reflect aggressive faith. What do I mean by aggressive faith? I mean stubborn 
faith. I mean the kind of faith that is forceful. The kind of faith that stands its ground. The kind of faith that is determined and courageous. What do I mean by aggressive faith? I mean the kind of faith that does not take a no for an answer. The kind of faith that pushes and continues to push until it receives the results. The kind of faith that does not give up against all odds. I mean persistent faith. Hear me, child of God. Most people fail in life because they would not push one more time. Your breakthrough, your miracle, your success is in pushing one more time. The reason why most people fail is because they don't have what it takes. The courage, the determination to push one more time. Hear me, child of God. Your breakthrough, your success is in pushing one more time time where others decide to turn back hear me child of god where other people decide to turn back hear me one step further there lies your breakthrough hear me child of god where others choose to quit where others choose to turn back just one step further there lies your breakthrough hear me child of god people who get the big break in life are those who continue to push one more time when others have decided to quit. Psalm 30 verse number 5, the Bible says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Wow! Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hear me. The darkest hour of the night is just before dawn. When you are tempted to quit is when your breakthrough is delivered to you. Hear me, child of God. When you are tempted to quit, that's when God delivers your breakthrough to you. Are you willing to push until morning? Are you willing to push until morning? Are you willing to hang in there until morning? Are you willing to keep your faith until the sun shines on you? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Don't quit in your night. Don't give up in your night. Don't turn back in your night. Stand your ground and wait for the morning. Hear me, child of God. There is no permanent night. There is no permanent night. You must be willing to hang in there until the sun shines on you you must hold on to your faith in the name of jesus let's go to luke chapter 18 we're going to read from verse number one to verse number eight i want you to listen i'm talking to you on aggressive faith now jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make a point that at all times they ought to pray and not give up or lose heart. The reason why Jesus told this parable, it was to explain to us or to encourage us that at all times we should pray. We should not give up. We should not lose heart. Hear me, child of God. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Have stubborn faith. Have aggressive faith. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know the mountain that you're facing. I don't know the storm that you find yourself in as you watch this service right now. But this is the word of the Lord to you. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Have stubborn faith. Stand your ground in the name of Jesus. So he continued reading the story. Saying in a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God and had no respect for men. There was a judge, a very cruel and evil judge, who did not fear God. A judge that did not have respect for men. But also 
There was a desperate widow in that city. What? A cruel judge, but also a widow that was willing to push. A widow that was willing to push. A widow with stubborn faith. Hear me, child of God. Some of the people that you are contending with in your life, your marriage, your family, your career, your business and ministry are as evil as, and cruel as this church. The people that we compete with, the people that we contend with every day are as evil and cruel as this church. There is no way they are going to surrender without a fight. Every day, hear me, child of God. Every day we are engaged in a spiritual fight, you must fight the fight of faith. Don't give up. Be aggressive in your faith. The Apostle Paul, in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Listen to this. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. What he's saying is that he did not give up. He did not quit. He did not draw back. He did not surrender to defeat. He stood his ground. You can tell that the Apostle Paul had aggressive faith, stubborn faith. He was willing to push and continue to push. Today, I want you to hear me very well. Life is a fight and a competition. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you are in a fight, but also in a competition. Marriage is a fight, but also a competition. Family is a fight, but also a competition. Your career is a fight, but also a competition. Your business is a fight and a competition. Hear me, child of God. Satan wants to take what you have, but you better fight the good fight of faith in the name of Jesus. Don't allow the devil to take what God has given to you. Stand your ground in the name of Jesus. Other people as well are competing for what you have. So you must stand your ground and fight the good fight of faith. Hear me, child of God. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you are in a fight with spiritual forces that want to bring you down. So you must be aggressive in your faith. I wish you can get this one very clear. Every morning when you wake up, you are in a spiritual fight. Contending with spiritual forces that want to bring you down. They want to bring your marriage down, your family down, your children down, your business down. You must stand your ground in the name of Jesus. You must refuse to give up. We are in a spiritual warfare. That is why it is very dangerous for you to be casual about your life, to be casual about your relationship with God, and to be casual about your commitment to the church. You need to understand that there is no way you can take things slowly and casual and be well. You need to stand your ground and understand that it is a spiritual warfare. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you must check whether you have already you know, put on the full armor of God. Don't go out of your house naked spiritually. You must wear the full armor of God. When you read in Ephesians 6, the Bible gives us the list of this spiritual armor. Number one, it talks about the belt of truth. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. Number three, feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Number four, the shield of faith, which you use to quench the fiery darts of the devil. Remember that every day the devil throws at you fiery arrows and darts. So you need the shield of faith to resist the devil. Number five, the helmet of salvation. Number six, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. But number seven, praying always. You need to be a man of prayer. You need to be a woman of prayer. Every day you must ensure when you wake up in the morning that you put on the whole armor of God. We continue reading about this woman. The Bible tells us 
that there was a desperate woman, woman rather, in that city. This woman was faced with an evil judge who did not want to give her justice. Life is like that. There are people that will deny you justice. There are people that will deny you your promotion. There are people that will deny you opportunities. Don't give up. Stand your ground and continue to push. Be aggressive in your faith. How desperate are you? How serious do you want your breakthrough? How serious do you want to see God at work in your life? What price are you willing to pay to experience the power of God in your life? Are you willing to go all the way? Child of God, are you willing to go all the way? The blind beggar shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They told him to keep quiet and yet he shouted even the more. Are you willing to allow people to stop you, to silence you, or you're going to stand your ground and continue to call upon Jesus until he attends to you. So this blind beggar shouted, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people said, keep quiet. Are you going to allow people to silence your voice? Are you going to allow people to discourage you? Or you will stand your ground in the name of Jesus and continue to call upon Jesus until he attends to you. So this woman continued to push. The Bible tells us that she kept coming to him and saying, give me justice and legal protection from my adversary. She did not give up. She continued to push. Coming every day saying, give me justice. Give me legal protection from my adversary. She kept coming. She kept knocking. There are certain things in life that will not come the easy way. You must continue to ask and continue to push and continue to pray and continue to give and continue to do what you have to do. Child of God, are you going to pray once and give up or you'll continue praying? Are you going to give once and give up or you'll continue to give until you receive your breakthrough. Are you going to knock just once and give up? Or you'll continue to knock until that door is open for you. So this woman continued to persist until she received justice. Wow. What a powerful story. Hear me, child of God. Listen very careful. Your first disappointment is what makes you operate you. We all experience disappointments in life. Your first disappointment, hear me, your first disappointment is what makes you or breaks you. How do you handle your first disappointment? How do you handle your first disappointment? Hear me. How you handle your first disappointment in life is what will determine whether you stay in the game or not. People that failed to handle their first disappointment are not in the game today. Those that are in the game are those that were able to handle their first disappointment. Hear me, child of God. Your first rejection is what determines whether you continue in the game or not. How do you handle your first rejection when people reject you? How do you respond to that? Your first rejection, it either makes you or breaks you. How do you handle your first rejection? Hear me. People that could not handle their first rejection well, they are not in the game today. Your first failure in life either makes you or breaks you. How do you handle your first failure in life? Your first failure in business, your first failure in your career. Again, how you handle your first failure is what determines whether you stay in the game or not. Michael Jordan, when he participated in basketball at high school, he was cut out of the team, but he became a great basketball player because he was able to handle his first disappointment. How do you handle 
failure, your first disappointment, your first rejection, your first failure. So this woman, when she was turned back, she did not give up. She had what I call aggressive faith. She kept pushing. She kept knocking. Your first failed marriage, hear me, is what makes you, operates you. How do you handle your first failed marriage? The Bible tells us that she kept coming to him and saying, give me justice and legal protection from my enemy. For a time, this judge would not even pay attention to this woman. But later, he said to himself, even though I do not fear God, nor respect men, yet because this widow continues to bother me. Wow. Because this widow continues to bother me, I will give her justice and legal protection. Not because I want, but because she does not give up. She keeps on bothering me. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me down. Hear me, child of God. You have to push. You have to push. You must be stubborn in your faith. You must be aggressive in your faith. You must not give up in your faith. Hear me? God enjoys it when we bother him with our issues. God enjoys him. Enjoys it rather when we bother him with our issues. Every day you must go before God in prayer. Don't give up. Keep praying. Keep giving. Keep worshiping. Keep doing what is right. Don't give up in the name of Jesus. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not our just God defend and avenge his elect, his chosen ones, who cry out to him day and night. So God is using this parable to say to us, be like that woman and continue to push and continue to push until you receive I mean, justice, until you get your breakthrough. This woman cried out day and night. You must cry out to God day and night. You must pray to God day and night. Talk to God day and night. Fellowship with God day and night. Worship God day and night. Bother God with your issues day and night. And it says, will he delay in providing justice on their behalf? I tell you, that he will defend and avenge them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find this kind of persistent faith on earth? The Bible here talks about persistent faith. I am challenging you, child of God, to continue to push. Today, I'm talking to you on this kind of faith. The kind of faith that persists. The kind of faith that keeps pushing. The kind of faith that keeps praying, giving, worshiping until it sees results. The kind of faith that is aggressive and stubborn. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. We're going to read from verse number 17 to verse number 20. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching. So Jesus was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by. Who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The Bible says the power of God was present to heal. But listen to this. The power of God that is present to heal does not heal everyone. It heals those with stubborn faith. It heals those who receive by faith. Then behold... Man brought ladder on a bed a man who was paralyzed. Listen to this. Four men brought on a bed a man, a friend who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. So these four guys, when they heard that Jesus was in the house healing the sick, they brought their friend on a bed who was paralyzed. Who are you bringing to Jesus today? Who 
are you bringing to Jesus today? Jairus in Mark 5 went to Jesus on behalf of his little daughter who was lying at home at the point of death. He went to Jesus and said, I have a situation at home. My little daughter is sick at the point of death. Who are you bringing to Jesus today? Today, I want you to carry your troubles to Jesus. Today, I want you to carry your difficult husband and your difficult wife to Jesus. Today, I want you to carry your ailing business to Jesus, your failing marriage to Jesus, your sick parents to Jesus. Whatever troubles you, bring it to Jesus. And the Bible tells us that when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling in the mist before Jesus. Wow. When they could not go in through the door, they went in through the roof. I like their aggression. I like their stubborn faith. When they could not go in through the door, they did not turn back. They did not give up. They decided to go in through the roof. Don't allow people to stop you. Don't allow the crowd at the door to stop you. Refuse to be turned back at the door. If Jesus is in the house, it doesn't matter how you get into the house as long as Jesus touches you and addresses your needs. I'm not going to turn back when Jesus is in the house waiting for me. Don't return back home when Jesus is in the house waiting for you. If you have, to, if you have got to go in through the rooftop, do so. Jesus is ready to touch you. Don't allow people whose agendas you don't know to stop you at the door. Don't allow people to discourage your faith, to discourage you in business. Don't lose your job on account of people. Don't resign your job on account of people. Don't give up on your marriage on account of people. Don't give up on your dream on account of people. Stand your ground in the name of Jesus. Have aggressive faith. And the Bible tells us that when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. When he saw their faith, this was aggressive faith. Your faith must be seen. Your faith must attract the power of God. Your faith must attract God into your life. The last example. Let's go to Mark 5. I'm reading from verse number 25 to verse number 34. Mark 5 from verse number 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. This woman had an issue, a problem for 12 years. 12 years is a long time. God today is dealing with issues that have troubled you and your family for a long time. Today we are laying on the altar. Pains, hurts, sicknesses, troubles, and problems that we have carried for a long time. So this woman had suffered for 12 years and the Bible tells us that she had suffered many things from many physicians meaning that she had gone to many people for help. Her problem was the talk of the town. She carried a stigma. Your family has carried a stigma in your community for too long but today under this anointing God is changing it. You have personally carried a stigma for too long in your profession, in your marriage, in your family, in your career, in your ministry. But today under this anointing, God is changing it. You see, when you carry a stigma, opportunities escape you. Marriage escape you. When you carry a stigma, people reject you. But today, I decree in the name of Jesus that God is changing things in your favor in Jesus' name. Today, God is set to you free in the name of Jesus. I want you to bring all your troubles to Jesus. So the Bible tells us that she had spent all that she had, but was not better, but rather grew worse. Only God knows how much you have spent to fight court cases 
that were not supposed to be there to start with, but God is putting an end to that right now in the name of Jesus. Only God knows how much you have spent on rehabilitation centers to rehabilitate your son, your daughter, but God is setting you free right now in the name of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the cloud and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She heard about Jesus and responded. She came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. It doesn't matter from which side you are coming from. As long as Jesus touches you. As long as you touch the hem of his garment. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. She was not look, looking for recognition. She was looking for healing. What are you looking for? Are you looking for recognition of he or, or healing? She said, even if he does not see me, even if he does not know my name, as long as I receive my deliverance today in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and yet you say, Who touched me? So this woman made a demand on Jesus by faith. And Jesus looked around to see her. We had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, to her came and fell before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Daughter, your aggressive faith, your stubborn faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Your faith, child of God. You must have aggressive faith like this woman with the issue of blood. Today, I want you to touch Jesus. Today, I want you to touch Jesus. Wherever you are watching this service, I want you right now, in the name of Jesus, to lift up your hands to God and say, God, as I touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I ask you to touch me with your power and deliver me from all the troubles that I've carried for years. God, as I touch the hem of Jesus coming today, I ask you to touch my family and deliver my family from all the troubles that we have carried for years. Today, I want all of us to leave our troubles, our hurts, our pains, our disappointments of many years at the altar of Jesus. Say these words after me. Say in the name of Jesus, I will not carry what Jesus carried for me on the cross. In the name of Jesus, I will not carry the sickness that Jesus carried for me on the cross. In the name of Jesus, I will not carry the pain that Jesus carried for me on the cross. In the name of Jesus, I will not carry the poverty that Jesus carried for me on the cross. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to carry the troubles that Jesus carried for me on the cross. I receive my breakthrough right now. I thank for God for it. I celebrate my breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I want you to take a minute just to thank God for your breakthrough. Lift up your hands to the Lord and say, God, I thank you for my breakthrough. I thank your God for healing. I thank your God for salvation. I thank your God for setting me free from the troubles that I carried in my life and my family for many years. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for great deliverance. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor in the name of Jesus. Today, I was encouraging you, child of God, to be aggressive in your faith and take it by force. In the name of Jesus, don't give up. Keep giving, keep giving, keep giving, keep worshiping God, keep praying in the name of Jesus. Some of you, I know that God will touch you to give a thanksgiving offering 
for your breakthrough that you have received right now. If God touches you to do that, you know what to do. We have got the bank account on the screen right now. Make sure that you give and say, God, thank you for touching me. Thank you for giving me a breakthrough. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for my promotion in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to believe that this word has been a blessing to you. If you know sitting at home right now that you don't have a relationship with Jesus, your sins have not been forgiven. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He died for you on the cross. All you have to do is open your heart and welcome him to come and wash you with his blood and forgive you of all of your sins. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, with my mouth, I confess that you are Lord. With my heart, I believe that you are raised from the dead. Today, I give you my life. I thank you that right now, according to your word, I am born again. I am free. I am washed with the blood in Jesus' name. So if you have made this prayer, you must know that right now, according to the word of God, you are born again in Jesus' name. This is Apostle M. Virginia Popo, making you brighter, better, and bigger. I cover you with the blood of Jesus right now. I pronounce upon you peace, protection, prosperity, perfect health, the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen.